Small bookstores booming despite the fang. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com with another look at some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. This is episode 73. If you are keeping score, we've got that good book news, plus some outdoor learning. But first, not all heroes wear capes. A Vermont man has built a huge wooden sculpture of a middle finger to vent his frustration following an ongoing dispute with local government. Ted Pelkey claims he spent 4000 bucks to erect the sculpture on Route 128 in Westford in Vermont following an argument with town planners over whether he should be granted permission to expand his truck repair and recycling business. The business owner claims the sculpture, which towers over trees and buildings in the town, and pretty much everybody has to look at it. He said it's been a long time coming. Quote, the strain's been there for 10 years. They don't like us. We're not treated fairly. That's what this is all about. End quote. Pelkey Phil's being denied permission to move his business is entirely personal. And try as I might, I couldn't find any unedited photos of this giant middle finger statue that old Pelkey has erected. All you can find are the edited versions from the news agencies. I even went to Instagram and found some other middle finger statue somewhere else in the world, not the Vermont middle finger statue. So if you guys can find the unedited pictures of this, I'd love for you to share those. And of course, everything we say and play always included in your show notes. Let's have some more shameful joy in this first segment. After taking on the toxic Monsanto brand and losing 40% of its stock value, Bayer is now selling off brands to essentially stay afloat. One of the things they talk about, they're planning to get rid of their Sun Care line Copper Tone and their Foot Care Products Dr. Scholl's. Coincidentally, both of those were just bought off Merck just four years ago as the mergers and acquisitions continue apace because they're constantly trying to find out what you will be most interested in buying. The other one, GMO mosquito application for the Florida Keys, withdrawn, but as is usually the case, another one is on the way. So like a lot of situations, it is good news, but it might be not unmitigated good news because the powers that shouldn't be generally have the money to keep coming and trying and trying and trying. Our second story this week on Good News Next Week is, again, it kind of sends us either heading outside to the museum or heading to nature or one of those things, you know, that makes us feel better. Real-world learning experiences like summer camp can significantly improve children's knowledge in a matter of just days, a new study suggests. Researchers found that four- to nine-year-old kids knew more about how animals are classified after a four-day camp at a zoo. It wasn't that kids who attended just knew more facts about animals. The researchers noted the camp actually improved how they organized what they knew a key component of learning. This suggests organization of knowledge doesn't require years to happen. It can occur with a short, naturally learning experience, so says Layla Unger, lead author of the study and a postdoctoral researcher in psych at The Ohio State University. It highlights the enriching potential of real-world programs like summer camps. They aren't just recreation, and the PDF is not behind the paywall. Rapid experience-related changes in the organization of children's semantic log logic and knowledge. And I had a good time going to camp as a little kid. Even though my parents sent me to a Christian camp, it was still camp and it was still outside and I have pretty fond memories of it. Our third and final story this week on Good News Next Week is our cover story, Despite the Fang, and that would of course be Fedbook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. Small bookstores are on the rise. Publishers Weekly noting small bookstores booming after nearly being wiped out by the ascendancy of Amazon and other online retailers. Small bookstores, once pretty much thought doomed to extinction, are making a heady comeback. Small independent neighborhood bookstores, pronounced dead a decade ago, are booming. This according to Industry Watchers. A nationwide resurgence of independent bookstores in the U.S. particularly follows years of declining sales in the U.S., we're talking, during which industry pundits and internet evangelists consistently touted the death of the neighborhood biblio. Although book sales in brick-and-mortar locations dropped an alarming 40% between 1995 and 2009, sales in small bookstores, small neighborhood bookstores, have since stabilized and even staged a small comeback, rising some 5% over the past year. Shopping local has turned into a cultural call-to-arms of sorts, 
in U.S. bookstores over the past decade as small businesses seek to regain some of what they lost in the dot-com boom. And we are constantly singing the praises and heralding the supremacy of physical media. You might know I'm a fan of physical media, books, records, what have you. We thought Blockbuster was going to be around forever. That's the same thing I say about the Apple Music Store or Spotify. Those things could disappear overnight, and your giant virtual collection of playlists and songs will disappear with it. I think we see the move of people becoming more and more interested back in the real and the tangible things and people getting together and meetup groups. And these are all the things we talk about in the Good News Network. And just one last other bookstore note, uh, note back in Portland, we would always go to Broadway Books in Northeast for pretty much all of our kind of holiday and birthday gift needs. I was super uncle with some of the books I was able to get my nieces and nephews, all because I asked the smart local bookseller for advice. So I didn't know what to get for little kids. Your smart, passionate nerds at your local bookstore are going to have some pretty good ideas. And now, of course, that it is holiday shopping time again. Remember your local independent bookstore. And of course, not to forget as well, your local independent comic shop as well. That is episode 73 of Good News Next Week. Middle finger outdoor learning, small bookstores. As I always like to remind you at the end of all our episodes, we stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. Would love for you to come and check us out in the Media Monarchy community. I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Again, thanking you so much for listening and watching and taking part in some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories and not giving up. And I'm reminding you, as always, like Jello Biafra says, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Filato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult. All remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.